Hello, my name's Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg. Today we have a, a good question and answer, probably more common than what people want to really think about. But it's about a potential customer that has a one-year-old bull mastiff that wants to kill his neighbor's dog. So we're going to talk about this because it's it can be a hard situation to work with. And this question came into our website through the Ask Cindy portal, which is on the front page of Learberg.com. And we pick questions like this and offer the advice that we can when we think we can offer decent advice. First, I'll read what they said. Hi, Cindy. Our one-year-old bull mastiff freaks out and wants to attack our neighbor's dog every time he sees him. He goes from zero to 10 in a second. I've had him around other dogs with no issues. Do you have any good resources you could recommend to correct this behavior? So, this is one of those questions where people will write us and there's not enough information in the original question for us to even come close to helping them. And when people ask a question in the Ask Cindy, they have to put their email address in there. Not because we spam them, we don't. Not because we sell mailing lists, we don't do that. We've never done that, never will. But these tickets go into a database, and that database has to be tied to the customer. So that if Cindy has to ask more questions, she can send them a ticket back or a notice back saying, what about this, this, or this? And then they have to fill that second ticket out and send it in before she can offer some advice. And that's kind of what happened here. Cindy sent a ticket back and said, is he on leash when he does this, or what are the circumstances? And then the customer wrote back and said, the circumstances seem to be multifaceted. I've been inside our house with our main door open, but the screen door shut. Our dog hears the sound of the neighbor's dog's collar and he'll perk up and charge the door. I've started claiming, <laughs> I'm not sure what this means. I've started claiming to kill that behavior. However, the other day my wife had him by the leash and was getting ready to take him out. The neighbor's dog was already outside. Our dog saw him bull rush the door, pulling the leash out of my wife's hand, swung the door open, and attacked the other dog. I got to him before any biting occurred, but still, it was a frustrating situation. So obviously, they don't have a fenced backyard. Another situation is the fact that we have a back deck, as do the neighbors. Sometimes, if our dog is on the back deck and the neighbors let their dog on their back deck, they both start barking and lunging at each other, through the railings. Hmm. Doesn't sound good, does it? So far, to correct the behavior, I've had my dog on a prong collar and yanked him as hard as I could, but it seems to only intensify the drive. I have also attempted using an e-collar, but this too seems to intensify the drive. Sounds like a problem. Then Cindy wrote, I think you need some help from someone who can come to your house and help you work through this in the environment where these issues are taking place. Where do you live? What is your closest large city? Using the prong and the e-collar in this way to extinguish aggression can and often does amplify that aggression. And that's the absolute truth. One of my 10 rules for using a remote collar is do not try and use a remote collar to stop dog fights. Do not try and use a remote collar to stop dog aggression because that dog can redirect right back into you. And the same thing goes with dogs that are reactive dogs. We don't recommend using prong collars or remote collars on reactive dogs. Oftentimes, a correction with 
a prong collar on a reactive dog just makes them more reactive. It just makes them more aggressive. So that's the wrong way to go for both prongs and remote collars. You're better off using a slip collar, but we'll talk about that in a second. Hi again, Cindy. This is when he came back after the last one. Hi again, Cindy. Update for the issue. We met with a trainer in our area who recommended using a snoot loop. Hmm, that's an interesting name, a snoot loop. Similar to a gentle leader to reinforce the dog's attention on us when we have these kind of situations. A snoot loop, we don't sell them. This does seem to work. However, the tool rubs the dog's nose raw, so we're back at square one. That's why we don't sell them. I'm told you have three seconds when the dog elevates to correct him until they react. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out the best way to correct the dog if it does react and I don't get to him in time. We live in DC area, by the way. Do you think just getting a dominant dog collar may help? Maybe that would correct the behavior without escalating the behavior. That's probably where we would start if we did it. But the dominant dog collar has some issues to it. Number one, the person that's using the dominant dog collar has to have the dog on leash. And that person has to be strong enough in the arms to be able to deal with a one-year-old bull mastiff. So that's something that, you know, that's something to think, <laughs> that's something to think about. Cindy goes on to say, I'm pretty strong, but a bull mastiff might be too big for me to control in a situation like you're describing. Your dog has had some time to rehearse this behavior. So it's gotten stronger and stronger and stronger in the behavior. So you're kind of up against a wall on what you're gonna do. She says, and I agree, I'm not sure this is something that can be handled safely by an email. I can put out a word with trainers and colleagues that are near you, if we know any that are near you, and recommend that you take your dog to them or ask them to come to your house. So my point here is we can't answer all these questions because some of them are so hard, so ingrained in a dog that it needs to take direct supervision by a professional dog trainer right there. This dog has some serious problems and we can't blow smoke at him and say do this or do that. If it was my dog, I would deal with him the way that I use a dominant dog collar. He would learn that this behavior is not going to be tolerated. But I will also say, that, also say this, the dog has practiced this behavior so long that I don't think you're ever going to extinguish it. It's gonna be there forever. You may be able, through the use of a dominant dog collar, you may be able to control it when you're there, when you have him on leash, but if you're not there, He's gonna be right back at it. And anybody that tells you differently doesn't have enough experience. Now, in closing, this is a, an interesting last ticket that came from this customer. He said, I haven't checked my account in a while. My dog seems to be doing better. I've narrowed the behavior down to just our house in our neighborhood and this dog. We just returned from a trip to New York where our dog played excellently with several different dogs with no issues. I would say, just my opinion, and I'll tell you it in a second, I agree that he has learned this behavior at home on his turf. So it just makes it harder to break the habit. If you have any connections in our area, I'm totally open to them. This person is braver than I would be to take a bull mastiff that has this kind of aggression to a new environment and let him interact with other dogs. I would never let 
a dog like this interact with other dogs, especially dogs he doesn't know. It only takes one mistake. And breaking up a dog fight is a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. If you don't believe me, go to Learberg.com forward slash dogbites.htm and look at the photos that people send me of many photos of people getting dog bit by their own dogs. And I'm going to warn you, the pictures on these pages, on these dog bite pages that we have, were not pictures that I asked for. People sent them to me, and they're disturbing. So you, if you have a problem looking at those kind of pictures, don't go there. But don't think that you can break up a dog fight easily if you don't have good training. And we have an article and videos on how to break up a dog fight without getting hurt. So be very, very careful. Don't think that this is a simple thing that you're going to get into and out of if you have a bull mastiff trying to go on a, another large dog and you're going to break it up because it's a dangerous thing. I want to talk a little bit about the Ask Cindy portal on the front page of Learberg.com. You can go to that portal and ask Cindy, my wife, any question you want on dog training, on dog breeding, on health issues with your dog. Cindy and I have been in the dog business for many, many years. Me, uh, I'm 75 and I was <laughs> training dogs pretty seriously for 60 years. Cindy has been training dogs seriously for 40, 45 years. She was a groomer for 20 years, worked in a vet for 20 years. If we can answer a question for you, she answers the questions every day. People can come in and post, and you don't have to be a customer of Learberg. Uh, you do have to put your email in there, and the purpose for that, and I have to tell you this, is not so we can spam you with our email or sell your email address. We'd never, ever do that. The purpose for getting the email or the, the ticket with your email on it is that you can ask the question, Cindy will answer it. If she needs more information, she'll come back at you and she has to be able to communicate with you. And if you come back a week later, a year later, six months later, and ask a question, Cindy will look your email address up to see what you have asked in the past. And if it's on the same dog, she can review her previous answers and advice and maybe expand on it. So that's why. But it's, I don't know any other website on the internet for dog training where anybody can go in and ask any question they want and get it get an answer right away. If we're home, Cindy gets up in the morning, she goes out at five o'clock, takes care of our horses, and comes back in and answers her Q&As that she's got for the morning. What I do is I pick the good ones and put them into videos like this. We have a lot of them. I just started putting them into videos after doing the Ask Cindy for many, many years. We've got like 3,700 of them in a database that's searchable that you can go and put quotation marks around what you want to search on and be more, you'll get a more specific answer. We don't put every question in our database. It would be, there's thousands that don't go in there. We try and pick the best ones and put them in there. So there's 3,700 good ones there. So if you have a question, go to the Ask Cindy portal. If you want the best dog training equipment I think that you can find anywhere, we have it. We don't sell junk. We don't sell cheap stuff just because it's cheap. We only sell things that Cindy and I would use. And a number of the things that we sell, we have people that make them for us. We have a whole family of Amish harness makers that all they do is our leather work. And they've done it now for over 25 years. If you like the content in these Q&As, we have over 1,500 free videos on our website, in addition to a number of online courses and streaming videos that we sell by some of the top trainers really in the United States and really in the world. <laughs>